Yo, what's going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with Noob 2 Pro Part 2. We're going to be giving you guys 10 total tips on how to become better at the game and teaching you guys some things that I think about and that I look for when I am playing competitive, a ladder match, or just playing Brawl Stars in general. Now, it's going to be super hard to retain all 10 tips and just immediately use them. So try and learn one, two, or three and learn them as you keep going along in your gameplay. Eventually, it's just going to become second nature for you guys. and You guys are just going to do it while playing. You're not even going to have to think about it. So that being said, let's hop into the games and let's talk about the tips. So coming in at number one, we're going to be talking about super value. Now, super value is one of the most important things in the game to think about. It's something that's pretty high level, not a lot of people actually do this outside of the pros but one thing that I like to do especially when playing a brawler for example like barley is taking one shot before I use my super so on the screen you guys can see here that I have my super chilling and I'm ready to use it and say there's a bunch of people or brawlers or bots or whatever you're shooting at over here obviously you're gonna super them but what's crucial is actually getting that super back after you use it because one super does a lot of damage but once you get two supers down now that's when the real work actually comes in so for example what i like to do with barley is take my one shot so i'm going to shoot one time at the bot over here and before it lands i'm going to take my super now why do i do this example i already have my super back now obviously this is pretty tough to tell because i just supered like 20 bots over here so i'm going to do it to this guy over here so super before the barley bottle lands and just like that i already almost have my super back and i think Okay, we're one shot off, but in comparison to having a normal super and taking no shots at all, you guys can see, obviously from the supercharge, that it doesn't even go up nearly as much. So just taking that one shot beforehand actually does help a ton. I would highly recommend doing it, and it works really well with other brawlers outside of Barley as well. Another brawler I like to do this with is Colette. So if you were to just get a normal super off, for example, like so, you're going to get two charges back, and you're, again only two shots off your actual super which is really really good but if you were to take one shot before actually going in with your super as you guys can see shot super you're almost gonna have your super shot back already it's just gonna be one shot away so there's actually a really big difference in taking that shot and not taking that shot as you guys can see you can chain really easily if you just do that you get your super right back and then you can just use it again it is a really good tip that i would actually really really try and implement if you guys are going to do any of these this is the one that's definitely mechanically the most challenging but is definitely the most rewarding so definitely try this out let's hop into tip number two and let's get into the gameplay so going into tip number two we're going to be talking about brawler distances so example if you're in m's let's say and you have a mid you know just mid tier range you don't have long range you don't have close range if you're facing a brawler such as b you don't want to be in the range where the b can hit you but you can't hit the B because a good player, that's exactly where they want you. They want to be able to hit you while you can't hit them. And that is essentially their goal. That is every pro's goal is to get you within that distance. So you got to be doing some sneaky strats. You guys got to be using the bushes. You have to be using walls. You have to try and get them to waste shots, etc. There has to be a lot of things that you guys are doing in order to get within that distance. Because if you're stuck in that distance where they can hit you, but you can't hit them, that is exactly where they want you. And you cannot win the game like that. You have to figure out your distances. You cannot play into the distances that they want. It is so essential that you don't do this. And this is also one of the biggest tips that I can give you guys. Great example is this B over here. Now, I'm a Brock, but if I was anything but a Brock, I would get outranged by it. And I want to be able to use the walls, walk around the map, use the bushes, use my jukes to try and get as close as possible to that B. Because when we're at that distance, that's max distance for the B or close to max distance for the B and I can't hit it. There's going to be no way that we get the kill. Now, moving on to the next step, we're going to talk about dodges. Now, dodging is extremely important. Now, you guys might think dodging is just moving back and forth, which is literally 99.99999% of players. They say, oh, I'm good at dodging. I don't walk in a straight line just because they walk back and forth. That's not good enough. Every good player in the game expects you to walk back and forth. You get hit by a shot, you move the other way. You don't get hit, you still move the other way. You have to change up your movement patterns. Sometimes go straight, sometimes take a hard left, sometimes pretend you're going one way and then end up going straight. Sometimes go back and forth. You always have to be changing it up. You guys can see on the screen, all the brawlers that we're facing, they're just going side to side, side to side. That's the only way that anyone ever jukes. It's really weird. I don't know why everyone does this. Definitely change up your juking pattern because that is going to help you a ton in any type of matches. So moving into tip number four, this one is going to be don't play obvious. Now, what does this exactly mean? Let's say, for example, you're a primo with the ball in Brawl Ball. The obvious, and you have your super. The obvious, obvious move that everyone is going to expect you to do 
is pass it forward and super it in the net. You're going to do that 10 out of 10 times. Everyone does that. I would definitely not recommend doing that because everyone thinks you're going to do that. If you play any player that has any form of skill or knowledge about the game, you're going to realize, okay, this is what the primo is going to do. I don't have to shoot it. I don't have to go next to it. Let's just wait beside the net and eventually we're going to be able to catch the ball and move it out of the way. Well, sometimes you can go for the goal if you think you really have an easy shot of getting it. But other times, instead of doing that, how about you just pass the ball to your teammate while, they're, while the opponent is just standing there waiting for you to shoot the ball forward so you can catch it and just jump on them and get the kill, chain your jump, get another kill, etc. It works way better than just doing a very typical obvious play. I'd highly recommend changing it up, changing your strategy every now and then. It, it will definitely help you out a ton rather than just playing obvious and doing the play that everyone expects you to do. Our fifth tip of the video is going to be using grass and walls to your advantage. So say you're bring, playing a brawler like Nita, which is really good at peeking shots and hiding behind walls. Use that to your advantage. Hide behind walls, come out for a second, spray a shot or two, and then go right back behind that wall and hide. The walls are your friend. They help you out a ton. Same thing with grass. Let's say you're a bull or a tank or any type of brawler that wants to sneak up. You want to use that grass to get closer to opponents. You want to use that grass to stay sneaky, to hide, to do whatever you guys want. That grass is extremely important. The walls are extremely important. Use the map to your advantage. Now, another one that also goes hand in hand with use the map to your advantage is you can change the map to benefit you. For example, if you're playing Colt, you can break the walls to make one side of the map completely wide open. We see this strategy in competitive a lot of the time where there are brawlers such as tanks or brawlers just that aren't good in open map environments and they go up against Colts that just break the wall so that they just completely ruin the strategy of the other team. You can easily break half the map with just two wall breaks from Colt. Even one super is enough to basically break open half the map. So I would highly recommend if you are really good at the game and you can use actual wall breaks and skill brawlers to change up the map to definitely do so on a lot of the maps that you don't do it or just do it at all because it is definitely a strat to catch people off guard and it's an easy way to push trophies or win a game with a sneaky little advantage. So going into the next tip, I think this one is actually really important, but it's to gather as much intel as you can. What's important in Brawl Stars is knowing where everyone is, knowing where they're at, what, if they have supers, all this type of stuff. When playing gem grab especially, there can be Taras or Jean sneaking up on you, Sandys, M's, any of those brawlers can just sneak up on you with those supers if you don't actually know where they are and just win the game based off of being totally sneaky. You do not want this to happen to you. This is really bad. So what you want to do is just gain intel. Try and know where everyone on the map is. Don't just focus hard on your lane and trying to beat it. Especially if you're playing mid, gem carrier, or even in brawl ball when there's a goal scorer on the other team. There's a lot of situations where you have to know where people are, where brawlers are, if they have supers, etc, etc. It is so important to have intel on everyone. If you know where everyone actually is, and if you know what they're doing or what it looks like they're doing, it's going to be really easy for you to win the game versus if you're just zoning out your lane. Now, you guys might say, you know, I play with randoms or I don't have a team or anything like that. Well, just don't focus on your lane. Look at other lanes. Look at other stuff. Don't just look at one thing or one brawler for the entirety of the game and try and stay as, you know, just, just, just try and keep everything in your mind. I don't even know what word I was going to use over there. Just try and balance everything. Try and know where everyone is. It is going to help you immensely win the game. It is so important to just know where everyone is. I don't even know where I'm going with this one anymore. Just try and gather as much intel as you guys can throughout the course of a game. It's going to help you guys win very easily. Now, the next one, this one's pretty obvious, and I've said this, and I'm probably going to continue saying this because this is the most important, but work as a team. The most toxic thing or the worst thing is when you get into a game of brawl ball and you get some mortis on your team and your mortis thinks he has to 3v1 dribble throughout the entirety of the enemy team in order to win the game it doesn't think about passing it doesn't think about killing it doesn't think about anything it just says okay i'm going to 3v1 this tree or this team purely off of dribbles nothing else i'm sure my teammates can do the rest but that is not going to work at all if you have max speed give your max speed to your teammates because max speed obviously helps you imagine what it could what you could do if your entire team has max speed or a sandy super yeah you can use it on your side of the map but imagine what would happen if your entire team had a sandy super it's just things like that that really change the outcome of a game and it's something that a lot of randoms or casuals or just noobs do not understand at all you have to help 
your team. You have to work as a team as much as you can, and that will raise your chances of winning. So we have two more tips for you guys, and these two are also going to be pretty crucial. So number one is switch lanes or try and get matched up with a brawler that you counter. So let's say I'm a Shelly on the left side and I am going up against a tank and that tank is on the right side. And on the left side is like a spike or Anita, something that counters me. Well, very simple. Instead of just fighting that spike or Anita that you're gonna lose to the entire game unless you heavily outplay it, why don't you just take five seconds of your time and walk to the other side of the map? I know it's very crazy to think of that you can actually walk to the other side of the map, but it is a strategy that all the pros use in their competitive games. It's very important to stay on the same lane as your counter because that is just going to make things so much easier for you guys. Same thing with Piper. If you're a Piper and you see a Brock, which Piper definitely does counter Brock, you want to go on the same lane as your Brock. It's very simple, or as the opponent's Brock, sorry. It's very simple, not a hard strategy. Just try and go on lanes that you counter. Most of you guys are smart enough. I don't even have to say what brawlers counter what. Most of you guys are smart enough to understand what counters what. So I don't have to go into that too much, but just try and get on proper lanes instead of just getting countered for the entirety of the game. And our last tip, this one is pretty simple, but do not waste your gadgets. Gadgets are so important in winning a game. Every stun by a Nita Bear is important. Every curveball by a Piper is important. Every big rocket shot by a Brock is important. Do not waste your gadgets as you only have three of them. Usually, each one of them, if you hit, it's a kill. Or if you hit, it's going to be a super big, massive play for the rest of your team that's going to help you win. So definitely do not waste your gadgets on just random stuff or things that you don't think are going to hit. Save them for good opportune times. You don't need to spam them at the start of a game like everyone does. Just save them, hold on to them throughout the game, and use them when it's needed. But anyways, those are going to be the 10 tips that I give you guys. These ones are a little bit more advanced than the last video. I plan on making them more advanced and more high leveled as we go on in this series. But that's going to be it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, leave a like, subscribe, all that type of stuff. I will see you guys again, hopefully tomorrow. Peace.